Shattering Mist in uh, Germany, a, uh, a Nigaman in 2003. And he uh, published a research uh, uh, investigation that analyzed the petrographical and uh, geochemical properties of three stalagmites found in a cave, uh, which uh, they developed, um, from which I should say they developed a climactic history that actually covered uh, the last 17,600 years. Now, the results, uh, in their words, say they resemble records from a, uh, an Irish uh, stalagmite. That was the McDermott study that we spoke of uh, in a previous segment of today's program. Specifically, they note that their data provides evidence for the existence of the Little Ice Age, for the existence of the Medieval Warm Period, for the existence of the Roman warm period, which also implies the existence of the Dark Ages cold period that separated the medieval and Roman warm periods. Similar results were obtained in northern Europe by Grud, who assembled tree ring widths from 880 living, dead, and subfossil northern Swedish pines. And he uh, assembled these into a continuous and precisely dated chronology covering the period 5,407, he is trying to be very precise here, 5,407 BCE to CE 1997. The strong association between this data and the summer mean temperatures of the final 129 years of the period enabled him to produce a 7,400-year history of the summer mean temperature for northern Swedish uh, regions, particularly the Lapland. The most dependable portion of the record, based upon the number of trees that were sampled, were the last two millennia, the last 2,000 years, which Grud et al. said display features of century timetable climatic variations known from other proxy and historical sources, including a warm Roman period in the first century CE and a generally cold Dark Ages climate from about A.D. or C.E. 500 to C.E. 900, after which came the medieval warm period, the Little Ice Age, and the modern warm period. Once again, the most comprehensive study of its kind of tree rings in northern Europe has demonstrated that there has been a Roman warm period, a Dark Ages cool period, a medieval warm period, a little ice age, and a subsequent warm period which we are just entering. Therefore, the warming of the earth and retreat of glaciers is a direct result of the exact same climactic changes that have been witnessed on this planet for the last 4,000, or in this case, 7,400 years. It is not a result of man's activities, the industrial age, or the burning of fossil fuels. Politicians, academicians, and the media who are seeking to control your life Make energy less available, more expensive, constraining the growth of, of industry and of economic growth and prosperity, redistributing funds amongst nations from those who are productive to those who are not, is all a result of a lie that man is responsible for global warming when in fact it is part of trends that can be dated back over 7,000 years. Now going back further in time, the tree ring record that was developed uh, in this study by Grud displays several more relatively warmer and cooler periods. And in a telling commentary on current climate 
claims they report the relatively warm conditions of the late 20th century do not exceed those reconstructed for several earlier time periods. In fact, the warmth of many of these earlier warm intervals significantly exceeds the warmth of the late 20th century. This was another lie by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They claimed that the earlier warm periods were at most at the same level and typically several degrees cooler than the current warm period. That is to give credence to the idea that the current warm period is influenced by human activity. But the truth is, the previous warm periods have been warmer than the current one, completely destroying the myth of man-made climate change. This means that the uh, anthropogenic global warming theory is a complete lie, one promoted to homogenize humanity, to rob and control the masses. It is a lie as pervasive as the war on terrorism, as lie as, as pervasive as the notion that the military provides your freedom, as lie a lie as pervasive that Jesus died for your sins, that Billy Graham wants to promote, a lie as pervasive as the notion that Allah is God. Further in our investigation, we learned that off the coast of Europe, in the eastern Norwegian Sea, Anderson et al. in 2003 published their research, which reconstructed a 3,000-year history of the surface conditions above the Vorin Plateau from a planktic stable isotope and uh, form a miniaphral uh, assemblage patterns derived from analysis of two sediment cores. The temperature history they developed was remarkably similar to the one developed by McDermott. Both records began during the end stage of the long cold period that preceded the Roman warm period. And I refer to that as the Greek cold period. Both depicted the warming from that point in time to the peak of the Roman warm, warm period, which occurred about 2,000 years in our past. And both depicted a subsequent descent into the Dark Ages cool period, which held sway until the increase in temperatures that produced the medieval warm period. The 2009 Mann study found warmth exceeding the 1961 to 1990 levels in southern Greenland and parts of North America during the medieval warm climate anomaly, defined for this purpose as between 950 and 1250, with warmth in some regions exceeding the temperatures of the 1990 to 2010 period. Now, from around 1,000 CE, uh, just as further evidence of all of this, Vikings formed settlements in the two areas located near the southern tip of Greenland, in a similar latitude to Iceland today, in the eastern uh, settlement at the southern tip uh, and the western uh, settlement to its north. A smaller group of farms between them has been identified by archaeologists as the middle settlement. At the time... Here in Iceland and Greenland, they farmed uh, cattle and pigs, and uh, around uh, a quarter of their diet was, was seafood, while the three quarters was from crops, cattle, and pigs. But as the climate became cooler and stormier around 1250, smaller farms gradually changed to farming sheep and goats rather than cows so they could survive the cold. And at about 1300, they abandoned pig farming altogether and came to rely on seal hunting, which then provided three quarters of their food. Just by archaeological research, not by scientific evaluations of sediment layers, but just by digging around in the ground, we verified the warm period followed by a cold period.
Around 1000 CE, the climate was sufficiently warm for the north of Newfoundland to support a Viking colony. It was called uh, Vinland. Uh, an extensive settlement at Laons Ox Meadows has been found and subsequently excavated. In the Chesapeake Bay, a little closer to home for Americans, researchers have found large temperature excursions, changes from the mean temperature of the time during the medieval warm period, uh, from around 950 to 1250. And then they determined that during the Little Ice Age, the most extreme temperature plunge was between 1400 and 1700 CE with cold periods persisting into the early 20th century. In other words, the Little Ice Age may have ended right around 1900 to 1925, which is why when, uh, uh, when the climatologists pick 1950 through uh, 1998 as their timeline to measure warming, they all find warming. Guess what just ended? Guess what we're coming out of? The Little Ice Age. Similarly, uh, the North Atlantic um, uh, condition was uh, shown to be a result of uh, thermal haline circulation, and the sediments in the Piedmont Marsh in the lower Hudson River show a dry medieval warm period from about 800 CE to 1300. All of this corresponding, no matter where they look, no matter where in the world, they find proof that the earth goes through 500 to 600 year cycles of cool to warm back to cool again to warm to cool to warm of which we are just coming out of a cool period and entering a warm period having nothing to do with human activity or the burning of fossil fuels nor the industrial age Prolonged droughts affected many parts of the western United States and especially California and the Great Basin. Alaska experienced three time intervals of comparable warmth uh, during these exact same periods that we have noted them around the world. Knowledge of the North American medieval warm period has been especially useful in dating occupancy periods of certain Native American habitation sites, especially in arid parts of the western United States. Review of more recent archaeological research shows that as the search for signs of unusual cultural changes during the medieval warm period, that it is broadened that we're finding ubiquitous examples of these early warm periods and the consequence of the cold periods that followed and then the rebirth of these cultures during the warm period. We'll return in a moment. <laughs> periods of five to six hundred years of global cooling followed by five to six hundred years of global warming have not only occurred in the northern hemisphere but also have been chronicled in the southern hemisphere. The medieval warming period was noted in Chile in a 1500 year lake bed uh, sediment core as well as in the uh, eastern regions of Ecuador. In uh, Kuban, while investigating sediments in, uh, in a lake in central Japan, they also found evidence of the warm period from CE 900 to 1200 CE, corresponding to the same medieval warm period, and three cold phases which could be related to the Little Ice Age. A 1979 study from uh, the University of Wakato found that temperatures derived from a stalagmite found in New Zealand, which last time I checked was in the southern hemisphere, suggested that the medieval warm period had to occur from 1050 CE to 1400 CE and that the temperatures were at that time one and a half degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the current warm period today. The medieval warm period has been evidenced in New Zealand by 1,100-year-old tree ring records as well. 
Therefore, my friends, what we uh, find from uh, the amalgamation of the scientific research is that the Earth endured a cold period from 975 to 250 BCE. This was during the rise of the Greek Empire. This was followed, by, this period, by the way, lasted approximately 725 years. This was followed by a warm Earth beginning in 250 BCE to 450 CE. It's known as the Roman Warm Period. It lasted 700 years. This was followed by a cold period known as the Dark Ages Cold Period. It began in 450 CE and concluded around 950 CE, enduring about five centuries. A warm period commenced thereafter, known as the Medieval Warm Period, lasting approximately 400 years, from 950 CE to anywhere between 1250 to 1350 CE, depending upon whose research you prioritize. This, then, concluded with a cold period, known as the Little Ice Age, which commenced between 1250 and 1350 CE and concluded somewhere between 1850 and 1900 CE, just about a hundred years ago, known as the Little Ice Age, enduring between five and six hundred years. The warm period Therefore, that commenced somewhere between 1850 and 1925 has concluded, it continues, I should say, into the present day. This is absolute proof that all we are doing is continuing to follow these long, century-long, five to seven hundred year long durations of cooling periods followed by warming periods that have affected our entire globe long before the activities of man included industrialization or the burning of fossil fuels. Now let's uh, talk a little bit more about the Little Ice Age because we are coming out of the Little Ice Age and it has such a tremendous influence on the fact that the Earth's temperatures must be warming from this period. And we should also realize as we investigate the Little Ice Age that it is during this period that man suffered greatly, that a cold Earth is not conducive to human life. It is, it is counter to human life. The fact that the earth is warming is beneficial, not harmful. Here we, uh, we go. The Little Ice Age depicts the period of extensive cooling that occurred after the medieval warm period. It was discovered in 1939 by Francois Mathis. He, uh, it extended from the 16th to the 19th century, or more precisely, from his calculations, from 1350 to 1875. NASA defines this as a cold period lasting between 1500 and 1900, about 400 years. They report that there were three particularly cold intervals, one beginning around 1650 and another at 1770, and the last commencing in 1850, each separated by periods of slight warming. But, as we learned in a previous segment of Shattering Myths Today, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has done their level best to negate this reality. And we'll remind you of what they have said, have lied, when we return to Shattering Myths after the commercial break. <laughs> To shattering this, we were uh, considering the um, deception that is being promoted by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They uh, received a Nobel Prize for their lies uh, not uh, too long ago. They reaffirmed their lies uh, about two weeks ago, a meeting uh, in Sweden. Uh, they have attempted to negate the realities that we have been uh, examining regarding these uh, global um, periods of cooling followed by uh, warming. And their quote in their last uh, report was that they are largely independent, which means they're 
that have nothing to do with global cycles, uh, regional as opposed to uh, global, uh, climatic change rather than globally synchronous increased uh, glaciation. So they're they're hanging their hat on the on the glaciation and the retreat of the glaciers that they're using for the uh, the to promote the current myth that man is responsible for uh, global warming. And yet what we find is that the proof of the cool periods followed by warm periods is throughout the planet. There is no place on the planet that doesn't show evidence of these periods and they're uh, synchronous. Exactly the opposite of what the IPCC has reported. And they claim, the IPC said, that they're uh, only occurred in the northern hemisphere when in fact there are as many examples in the southern hemisphere as there are in the north. Now, in terms of human evidence, as opposed to just scientific investigation of, of sediment cores or stalagmites or, or uh, uh, radiocarbon dating of, uh, of various uh, uh, discoveries, we find those throughout the world. There is more human evidence in the Northern Hemisphere only because there's been a greater propensity uh, for civilizations to flourish in the Northern Hemisphere, and they've been uh, more uh, at least proficient in writing down their histories. So we know more about the Northern Hemisphere in terms of human interaction with these uh, warm and cool periods than we do in the Southern Hemisphere. But everything that this UN-sponsored, uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change has said to refute the obvious, which is that the current warming trend has nothing to do with human activity, that they're false, and they've ignored them all, and they want you to ignore them as well. But the proof of increased glaciation outside of Europe occurs not only in New Zealand, but also in Patagonia. And we find that the ice pack began to advance and expand on glaciers worldwide, no matter if they are found in the southern hemisphere or in the northern hemisphere. And based upon carbon-14 dating of plant material connected beneath the ice caps, we find confirmation from the top of the world to its bottom of each of these periods. The Little Ice Age uh, ended in the latter half of the 19th century in the early portion of the 20th century, or around 1850 to 1925. The Little Ice Age brought colder winters to parts of Europe and to North America. Uh, farms and villages in the Swiss Alps were destroyed by encroaching glaciers during the mid-17th century. Canals and rivers in Great Britain and the Netherlands were frequently frozen, uh, to support, enough even to support ice skating during winter, winter festivals. The first River Thames Frost Fair was in 1607. The last was in 1814. Changes to the bridges and embankments affected river flow and depth and diminished the possibility of the freezes thereafter. Freezes in the Golden Horn of the southern section of the Bosphorus took place in 1622 and again in 1658. A Swedish army marched across the Great Belt to Denmark to attack Copenhagen. In the winter of 1794 and 95, it was particularly harsh when the French invasion occurred and they could march on frozen rivers of the Netherlands where the Dutch fleet was fixed in an ice den uh, in the Den uh, Harbor. In the winter of 18, uh, 1780, even New York Harbor froze solid, allowing people to walk from Manhattan to Staten Island. <laughs> the Iceland also was frozen for miles in all directions, closing harbors to shipping. The population of Iceland during the Little Ice Age fell by 50%. Iceland also suffered failures in their cereal crops. The Norse colonies in Greenland starved and vanished by the middle of this period as the crops failed and livestock could not survive. In North America, American Indians formed leagues in response to food shortages. In Lisbon, Portugal, snowstorms were much more frequent than they are today. Heavy snowfalls in the winter of 1665, 1744, and 1886 have all been documented. Crop practices throughout Europe 
had to be altered to adapt to the shortened to less reliable growing season. There was famines, the Great Famine of 1315 to 1317 as an example. According to Elizabeth Wan and Jane Nugent, famines in France in 1693, Norway in 1695, Sweden in 1696 claimed roughly 10% of the population of each country. There is absolute proof of violent storms and flooding, of famines, starvation, math depopulations, all attributable to the Little Ice Age, the period of time that we're emerging out of and is the reason that the planet is warming. In Glacier National Park, the last episode of Glacier Advance came in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. In Ethiopia and Mauritania, permanent snow was reported on mountain peaks at levels where it does not occur today. In Timbuktu, an important city in the Trans-Saharan caravan route, it was flooded at least 13 times by the Niger River, and there are no records of similar flooding before or since. In China, warm weather crops such as oranges were abandoned where they had been grown for centuries. Also, two periods of the most frequent typhoon strikes in Zhongdong coincide with the two coolest and driest periods of northern and central China, all during the Little Ice Age, 1660 to 1860. In North America, and early European settlers reported exceptionally severe winters. For example, in 1607 and 1608, ice persisted on Lake Superior until June. We have records in the 1686 journal of Chevalier de la Toyez, who led an exposition to James Bay, that it was still littered with so much floating ice that it could not be navigated even with a canoe as late as July 1st. Analysis of the several proxies that were taken in, uh, in Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula linked uh, to both the Mayan and Aztec uh, civilizations chronicle the same period of cold, of drought, and the existence of the Little Ice Age in this region. Since the discovery of the Little Ice Age, there have been uh, doubts as to whether it was a global phenomenon, of course, only promoted by those with an agenda, with those who want you to believe that the current warming of the earth is totally independent of environmental and celestial factors and is being caused by man. But the proof is overwhelming. It is ubiquitous. It doesn't matter if you're looking in southern Africa, where sediment cores from uh, Lake Malawi show colder conditions between 1570 and 1820, or if you're looking at stalagmites found in South uh, Africa, suggesting a cold period during the same period of time, also during the Little Ice Age. Kruts et al. compared the results from studies of West uh, Antarctic ice cores with the Greenland Ice Sheet Project and found a synchronous global Little Ice Age completely conflicting with the testimony of the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. That report was published in 1997 before the inter Governmental panel on climate change lied to report exactly the opposite of what they knew to be true. The authors note, other unexplained climatic events comparable in duration and amplitude to the Little Ice Age and medieval warm period also appear throughout the world. A study that analyzed isotopes in the Great Barrier Reef suggested that increased water vapor transport from the southern tropical oceans to the poles contributed to the Little Ice Age. Borehole uh, reconstructions from Australia suggest that over the last 500 years, the 17th century was the coldest on that planet. You see, it wasn't limited to the northern hemisphere. Last time I checked, Australia and the Great Barrier Reef, as was Antarctic in the Southern Hemisphere. Sea level data for the Pacific Islands suggest that sea level in the regions fell 
possibly in two stages between CE 1270 and 1475 during the period known as the Little Ice Age. This was associated with a 3 degree Fahrenheit fall in temperature during this period. On the west coast of the Southern Alps of New Zealand, Franz Josef Glacier advanced rapidly during the Little Ice Age, reaching its maximum extent in the early, early 18th century, and one of the few places where the glacier actually thrust into a rainforest. Based upon the dating of yellow-green lichen, uh, the Mueller Glacier on the eastern flank of the Southern Alps within the Cook National Park is considered to have been at its maximum extent between 1725 and 1730, which is why it is now retreating. Tree ring data from Patagonia, that would be in South America in today's Argentina, show cold episodes between 1270 and 1380 and between 1520 and 1670, periods contemporaneous with the Little Ice Age. And confirming that the events chronicled in the Northern Hemisphere also occurred simultaneously in the Southern Hemisphere. It was global cooling, followed by global warming, preceded by global warming, preceded by global cooling. Eight sediment cores in a uh, South American lake have been interpreted showing a humid period between 1470 and 1700, which the authors describe as a regional marker in the southern hemisphere of the Little Ice Age. The 2009 paper details cooler and wetter conditions throughout South America between these periods, confirming that the phenomenon was global and it was synchronous, meaning that it happened at the same period of time all across the planet. We'll return to Shattering Mirth Smiths after this commercial break. In the North Atlantic, Sediments uh, accumulated since the end of the last ice age, nearly 12,000 years ago, show regular increases in the amount of coarse sediment grains deposited from icebergs melting in the now open ocean, indicating a series of 2 to 4 degree Fahrenheit cooling events on reoccurring cycles, each lasting approximately 500 to 600 years all separated by warming periods of the same duration. The most recent of these cooling events was the Little Ice Age. The same cooling events are detected in sediments accumulated off of southern Africa. But the cooling events there in the southern hemisphere are far more significant rather than ranging between 2 and 4 degrees Fahrenheit off of the coasts of southern Africa, we can chronicle temperatures just 200, 300, 400, and 500 years ago and are not too distant past 6 to 14 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than what we're experiencing today. All as a result of what is known as the Little Ice Age, which was experienced when we came out of the medieval warming period, which is leading to the current warming of the earth, recovering from this rather catastrophic event known as the Little Ice Age. The global warming industry is therefore based on a massive lie. It is advanced primarily by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a, uh, an offshoot of the United Nations based upon the input of the CRU. The CRU is the Climate Research Unit. It is, uh, by its own admission, devoted to anthropogenic climate change. The University of, uh, of East Anglia in, the northern, in Norwich, England, is where uh, this unit was founded. It was uh, founded in uh, 1971. Um, the university itself is, uh, was founded in 1963. The motto of the university, by the way, where the CRU is based is, do different. Do different. It was founded by Lords of England, 
British Petroleum, the Royal Dutch Shell, the Newfield Foundation. I uh, did a quick study to find out why the Newfield Foundation would want to establish in 1971 a climate research unit. But uh, they're based, their fundamental claim, their objective is to create education that alleviates social advantage. In other words, to depress prosperity so that people are constrained to a similar stratum of, uh, of economic success. And it, its purpose is to alleviate social advantage, which is to therefore transfer the gains of those who have prospered and giving them to those who have not. And of course, it was also founded by grants from the Rockefeller Foundation, which will make you conspiracy buffs grin from ear to ear. The first director of the CRU, the Climate Research Unit, was none other than Hubert Lamb. We began this study by considering his work. He was the one who found that there was a great cooling period, which uh, is now known as the Little Ice Age, uh, which was followed by uh, which followed a global warming period known as the medieval uh, warm period. Well, of course, if you're, uh, if you, if the Little Ice Age followed a warming period, you would expect the Little Ice Age to be followed by a warming period, and that is precisely what has occurred. The CRU activists have been exposed, however, and they have completely ignored the last 3,000 years of climate change. And they have used cherry-picked data exclusively from a 48-year period from 1950 to 1998 as the beginning of a planetary warm cycle in order to support their false claims that global temperatures have risen at the end of the 20th century more than any time in human history and all is a direct result of mankind's mis- appropriation of fossil fuels and the industrial age and yet it's all a lie it's part of a pattern that has existed for a very long time part of a pattern that will exist for as long as the earth exists it is celestial in nature it is based upon the earth's orbit it is based upon the earth's axis it is based upon the sunspots and the the very power that drives the sun. You see, the CRU, as an organization, has used all manner of contrivances to create the myth that global warming is a function of man's activities as opposed to a function of the Earth's environment and the celestial sphere in which it operates.